Welcome to Fox Souls Black Report. This is the place we bring you the headlines and the latest in black news, views, and opinions. I'm Romeo. Hey there, I'm Brooke. I'm Demi. And I'm Melissa. <laughs> All right, on today's show, we're going to talk about the 10th Annual Women of Power National Summit with Melanie Campbell. We'll break down the runoff election in Louisiana to replace former Congressman Cedric Richmond, and the feds are investigating Baltimore's top prosecutor. Arkansas governor sets up battle for Roe versus Wade. Lead Capitol riot prosecutor says Trump could be culpable and the Church of God in Christ votes in new leadership. Miami is out of control. HBCUs and the NFL team up. Juneteenth could become a federal holiday and we have your update in the Justice for George Floyd trial. Yes, we do. We have all that and so much more. So if you're ready, it's our voice and our truth. Let's get it. To me, this reeks of conflict of interest. Do we know if he actually waved a gun? We only hear one side of the story. This just really did make me feel good that the justice system did what they needed to. So we're going to keep following this story, and we will have the latest news. There are now officially 14 jurors in Derek Chauvin's trial. This nearly completes the panel ahead of opening statements next week as the former Minneapolis police officer stands trial, charged with murder and manslaughter and the death of George Floyd. The AP is reporting the newest juror is a white social worker in her 20s who says she has talked with friends about police reform and she thinks there are things that should be changed, but she also described police and their jobs as important. She says she's always looking at every side of things. Other potential jurors were dismissed earlier in the day, and here are a couple breakdowns of the seated jurors, all right? Eight are white, four are black, and two are considered multiracial. That's how they identify. Nine are women and five are men, and they range in age from their 20s to their 60s. All right, it's unclear which jurors will be the alternates. Legal experts say it's almost always the last people chosen, but the court said that wouldn't necessarily be the case for Chauvin's jury. Opening statements are set to begin next Monday, March 29th. All right, so... A couple things that are obviously already different in this trial than others, um, than some others. The last two are not necessarily going to be the alternates. And also, the court initially called for 12 jurors and at least two alternates. And so, you know, a lot of people were thinking, even we were thinking, you know, 14 is going to be the number. And as it stands right now, there could be more. The court could add an additional uh, number of jurors as alternates because possibly because of what we've seen you know, so far. Hmm. Already had to dismiss two seated jurors. Yeah, I foresee that could be a problem. My mm -hmm. question is how many black people end up on the actual main jury of the 12? And I think that's very important because you said it's four, right? There's four uh, right now out of the 14 picked right now. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking at least three. All four should be there if you ask me, but I'm thinking at least three. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I'm just praying that this doesn't turn into an OJ trial um, jury situation, because if we remember what that looked like, you know, if everybody watched um, the mm -hmm. People versus OJ Simpson, that trial and what went on behind the scenes with the jury looked insane. These people literally looked like they were going to kill each other. And I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen. And I really hope that these jurors take into account the impact of the video. The fact that Derek Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck mm -hmm. for nine minutes with his hand in his pocket, the callous disregard for that man's life, regardless of anything that he is accused of doing, past or present, that is all that matters to me. If I was a juror, that is all that would matter to me. Hmm. Yeah. You know, guys, my biggest thing is I just feel like we've seen so many cases uh, similar to this. And I'm just really hoping that with this case, this is the justice system's opportunity to do the right thing. This is their chance to show the American people that are supposed to trust them that the justice system works. So I'm honestly just really hoping that um, this goes the way that we all hope and know that it should go in the direction of, you know, in the direction that we know that it should go in and also a big Crump, he wants to deliver 100,000 signatures to George Floyd's family. So um, if you go to act.bencrump.com, they're just asking for everyone to just put your signature in and they just want to deliver those to George Floyd's, George Floyd's family to show solidarity that we care and support uh, the hard time that they're going through right now. Yeah, and when I think about the O.J. Simpson trial, you may still ask some people today if he did it or not. And you might get a few to say he did not do it still. But in this particular case, we know what happened. Absolutely. So Absolutely. They, they cannot be behind closed doors having that debate. If they are, then that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There's also, you, you know, obviously similarities in there. Two very popular, I'm um, not popular, two very infamous cases, right, at this point. But also one is um, would be, you know, someone who, a government official, 
mm-hmm. who is charged, and another is a civilian mm-hmm. who is charged. And there's that's two big differences there. Mm-hmm. I also think, um, obviously, we talk about race played a huge part in that case, and, and one could say a pretty huge part in the acquittal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, you know, you know, uh, Derek Chauvin's. Uh, uh, his um, attorney. Attorney, thank you. His attorney said that a race is not this. This is not about race, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like we all know this about race, right? A white yeah. man can get away, can, can say that, and yeah. not know how tone deaf he sounds. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I yeah. digress. Moving right along, a federal investigation is reportedly underway with Baltimore's top prosecutor and her politician husband at the center of the probe. Marilyn Mosby, the state's attorney for Baltimore, and her husband, Baltimore City Council President Nick Mosby, are being investigated for potential campaign finance violations, according to a tweet posted from Baltimore Sun's reporter Justin Fenton on Friday afternoon. He described the husband, age 43, and wife, age 41, as Baltimore's power couple and added that there were authorities issuing subpoenas for financial information as well as to city churches. Union Baptist Church in Baltimore was subpoenaed, and its lawyer told the local Fox News affiliate that investigators wanted to know how much money the Mosbys give to the House of Worship. The Mosbys lawyer called the investigation a political witch hunt in the purest form and said his clients had committed no wrongdoings. So just to uh, uh, further the quotes that um, their lawyer said, he basically said she works. She's an elected official. She has sa- she has savings. She bought another home for her family. Um, so what? Um, she's you know, earns a salary. She has savings, a lender and credit score all to support her family. She has a legitimate ability to buy and purchase properties and invest her money in any way that she chooses. This is not news and it doesn't merit an investigation. Um, There's also the IRS also filed a Mm -hmm. $45,000 lien against the um, couple's Baltimore home. Um, in October for three years worth of unpaid taxes, but Nick Mosby says that that yeah. situation has been cleared up and it just hasn't been updated in um, county records. Um, and in addition to them subpoenaing the church to find out how much money they've donated, the church has released a statement basically saying that the Mosby's donation was below $200. Mm-hmm. So it really is seeming like they are just kind of looking for a needle in a thousand haystacks to try to dismantle the reputation of of the Mosby's and it's sad. Yeah, when you think about it, um, a lot of people in this position get away with handling money a certain way. Not mm. saying they did that, but mm-hmm. you know, the two Florida homes and then the one home, the condo at the mm-hmm. Gulf of Mexico, it, it draws red flags. Why, mm-hmm. we don't know. And then the whole thing about how much they actually donated to the church. I mean, that's to me, that's their own personal business, but I don't know what the end all is about this and why they're going after them, but it's going to come to light at some point. Mm-hmm. The Baltimore Sun is also reporting that, um, I guess, the two were discussing potentially setting up a legal defense fund for the mounting attorney fees, mm-hmm. and so now it's coming to question like, hey, well, just days before you said that, you spent a million more than a million dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it two million or more than one million dollars on two homes in Florida? Yeah, more than a million. One million. And so, um, yeah, you can absolutely. I understand. On one hand, you know, legal experts are saying you can spend your money any way you'd like, and then that part gets confusing. I think just for the community. That's just. Mm-hmm. I'm just basing that on lots of yeah. questions mm-hmm. that I've seen online so far. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Louisiana special election to replace former Representative Cedric Richmond is heading to a runoff between State Senator Troy Carter and State Senator Karen Peterson, both Democrats, after no candidate won a majority of the votes on Saturday. Carter had a 36 percent of the ballots cast compared to Peterson's 23 percent, according to WDSU in New Orleans. Black activist favorite Gary Chambers Jr. came in third, just 1,500 votes shy of making the runoff. The race for Louisiana's 2nd Congressional District, which spans from New Orleans to Baton Rouge, was hotly contested by 15 contenders. The rare vacancy vacancy for the deep blue seat was open when Richmond joined the White House as a top aide to President Biden. 